Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the Balcones Brujeria. Uh, this is a bottle that I picked up not at the distillery uh, while in Texas, but actually at a local uh, wine and whiskey shop. So, uh, traveling to Texas to uh, pick up whiskeys is not just about going to the distilleries, although that's the ultimate experience, uh, but also look around at uh, wine and whiskey shops because sometimes there can actually be bottles that aren't even available at the distillery because they've sold out and they're only available at other shops. Now, uh, in my previous video, on uh, which I reviewed uh, the uh, Balcones uh, Hatchaceros, uh, I mentioned that uh, or talked about these whiskeys are super concentrated. Uh, they're real high ABV and uh, they really can benefit from adding some uh, water to them to not only bring down the ABV and sort of tone back that sort of extreme and concentrated flavor, which you may like uh, that way. I'm not telling you how to drink your whiskey, but um, to bring it down to a more mm, palatable, perhaps, or more um, easy, <laughs> easier to uh, assimilate, I don't know, I'm trying to think of the best words for it, uh, 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 flavor and profile. Um, I talked about adding about an ice cube uh, worth of uh, uh, water, whether using a teaspoon or actually from an, uh, an ice tray. So three hours ago, uh, from before recording this, I dropped an ice cube in it, and it has had a, a lot of time to melt and really sort of become integrated into the whiskey. In fact, after I recorded that last uh, video, having having uh, spooned in some water, I found. Um, that over time, I liked it more and more after recording the video because the water became much more integrated. In fact, the, it, as the water became more integrated in time, uh, it became much more Scotch whiskey-like. And so it uh, should be the same experience in this, having the water in this for about uh, three hours. But before I get into this, here are my notes. Balcones Brujera, Texas Single Malt Whiskey, a Texas Single Malt expression finished in Oloroso and PX Sherry Cass, the name Brujera, roughly translates as witchcraft. It is bottled at 62.9% alcohol by volume, retails for about $120 in the United States, and if you're in Texas but can't get to the distillery, look for it at fine wine and whiskey shops throughout Texas. Alrighty, let's get into this. Uh... Even visually, it's starting to look more like a scotch. It's that sort of a medium amber color on the nose. Yep. <laughs> right now, smelling this right now, if I was doing this blind, I would think this could be a Glendronic, right? Kind of fig, dates, raisins, some spice, some cinnamon, vanilla, caramels, uh, perhaps a little bit of toffee. There's a little bit of that multi character there as well. A vanilla. Some chocolate notes, even some a little bit of a, like a coffee note. All right, on the palette. Wow. Oh my goodness. Wow. Now, I mean, I've been working on this bottle. This isn't the first time I've had this. I've got it down below the shoulder. But this is the first time that I've let the water sit in it for three hours. Previous occasions, enjoying this whiskey, I've just put an ice cube in and had a, a, a cold, or I put some water into it and then sort of immediately tasted it. Having the water into this for three hours, what a huge difference. Mmm. Wow. Oh my goodness. The ABV, I'm estimating. This is an estimate. I'm estimating the ABV is around 50 right now. That based on uh, the weight, the mouthfeel from the alcohol, and the intensity of flavor, as well as the bite. And to, to me, for me, this is just like exactly where I want it. So, in this glass, filled it up to about here, dropped one in ice cube. If you're going to use a Glen Cairn, try to squeeze an ice cube, you're going to have to figure out your own ratio. Wow. 
really, really, really rich. Fig, dates, raisin, caramel, chocolate, cinnamon, vanilla, a little bit of that coffee note, super long finish, a lot of development from beginning to uh, the mid to the finish. It has uh, this, this, it has a little bit more of an oily viscosity to it than the Hechiceros did. Wow. Absolutely, if, absolutely, if I was being blind tasted on this, as it is now, I would definitely think that this is a scotch from the Highlands or Speyside, you know, a, a, a heavily sherry uh, or sherry bomb uh, whiskey, definitely. If I was tasting it neat, it's more intense and super intense than any scotch whiskey I've ever had. So if I was tasting it neat, it wouldn't, I don't think it uh, fool, fool me for being a scotch, but bringing the ABV down and adding some water to it and the fraction that I did and letting it uh, absorb into the whiskey definitely seems like a single malt scotch. This is absolutely superb. I, I, I would really, what I would have really liked to do now is pull some Glendronics, particularly the, say, the hand filled cast that I brought back from uh, Scotland, uh, and do a blind tasting, uh, perhaps even with some uh, other heavily sherried cast. I've got some spring banks, and, and do them side by side and see which one I like best. But as it is now, absolutely loving this. I'm giving this a solid 95 points. I give the head to Saros a 93. I'm going giving this one a 95, an absolutely spectacular whiskey. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, would you like to watch my videos? I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when I go live or uh, share a, a new video. And until next time, cheers. Hey, don't forget to subscribe and check out these other whiskey videos.